smearing Pierre Polyev because many of those at his rallies are white is racist itself. And you might think that's opposite, but that has been the agreed upon counterpoint by the establishment meeting. And joining us now via Skype is our friend Rupa Subramania. Great to see you again, Rupa. It's so weird. I think that Pierre's wife is a visible minority, and I don't even want to make a fuss about it. I just, to say that he's a racist or, or they're not even saying that. They're just saying too many white people are there, which I don't even know what the point there is. You Like, are you saying a white person equals racism? You can't say that Pierre is racist. Pierre Polly, I don't think he is. His wife, I think, is a visible minority. Um, it's just so, so lame. It's so many degrees of separation <laughs> from calling him racist. I guess that's the go-to line, though, isn't it? It's weird. It is because you know they've they've been um, you know attacking him uh, you know on various fronts. So they've been comparing him to Marine Le Pen um, that he's a far right white supremacist and so on and so forth. But you know they they always go go to this old chestnut um, as I like to call it, which is you know who are the people showing up at uh, Pierre's events. Uh, and I was struck by this one comment by journalist Stephen Marr, who tweeted, um, you know, it's a whole lot of white people. If I was Poilevre, I would be wondering why I'm only attracting white people. Yeah. And this reminded me of when the Freedom Convoy was in, was in town in Ottawa. And that was the accusation that was made against them, that these are mostly white people. These are white people's issues. And so they're not representative of... Uh, of um, of um, you know mainstream Canadian Canadian opinion or what would be deemed as being acceptable, um, and 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 so you know the uh, it's, it's it's unfortunate. I don't even know why race even makes an appearance uh, when you know there's a lot that you can criticize. Uh, here, you know, you can you can look at what Pierre has been saying. You can criticize some of its policies. There's, there's a lot there that one could one could one could uh, pick apart. But but for some reason, the fact that the people showing up at his rallies are mostly white people uh, seems to be an issue for some for some because because for them, uh, if you don't have a certain diversity quotient at these events. Uh, they're not seen as legitimate or acceptable. Uh, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah, it's really weird. I mean, first of all, I don't know the stats for every place, but Canada is still a majority white country. Now, there it are is. some cities or regions where it's majority minority parts of Toronto, parts of Vancouver, et cetera. But, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I just don't even think it's factually true that his events are uh, overwhelmingly white. I know he had an event on an Indian reserve. I know he had a, a Sikh event. He's doing events in a variety of places, and I yeah. I see a diversity. I I think that uh, it, it's. I think it shows a lack of other things to throw at him. Exactly. Their, their, their attempt to compare him to Marine Le Pen. I can't think of any similarities uh, biographically. Policy-wise, the issues in in France are so different than the issues. In Canada, I just try. I mean, other than just trying to be dramatic, yeah. Um, yeah. comparing him to Trump maybe feels old and ridiculous. Trump's a seventy-something-year-old man with his, who's I think he's a very comedic guy and he's got an entertainer's flair. Pierre mm -hmm. is sort of the opposite. Pierre is very, I'm not going to say rehearsed, but he feels like he's very tightly scripted, very disciplined. What made Trump sort of fun and unpredictable was precisely the fact that you never know what you get with him. With mm -hmm. Pierre Polyev, you've been getting the same thing from him for 20 years. Just maybe that's why the Trump comparison doesn't work, or maybe because it looks just so laughable. But yeah. but you're a Marine Le Pen guy who gets white people to show out. Boy, that feels weak. It does, and that really speaks to the fact that they really have nothing uh, uh, substantial to say, really, because you know it's it's reaching at this point, and um, and 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 absolutely, you know, seventy percent of this country is white, and uh, and you know, and let's face it, you know, a lot of people um, that um, live in semi-urban and rural parts of Canada are mostly white. 
And I would say that um, that you know most most people who've been the losers from globalization and from you know where the pandemic has really hit hard, these are people who live in these areas and they happen to be mostly white. So if you know if they're showing up at his events because something you know because what he's saying resonates with them, what what is what is the crime in that? Yeah. Uh, you know why why is it why is it why is it such a big deal? And also, Ezra, you know, I'd like to say that, you know, a lot of people reacting to my piece and Mars piece, um, you know, tended to be very defensive. You know, I don't think white people should be defensive uh, of the fact that many that people showing up at these rallies are white. And I agree with you. Not all of these rallies are like this. Um, I, I think Pierre, um, you know, I suspect he has a wide appeal. Um, I think uh, people from various backgrounds across many different ethnic backgrounds probably support him. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I just don't think white people should be defensive. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking of one of the fun events that Pierre Polyev did was he was at a, um, a falafel uh, restaurant. Um, and he made a purchase using Bitcoin, and it was an Arab-owned restaurant, which a lot of large Arab community in the greater Ottawa area, and it mm -hmm. was just sort of fun and natural, and they weren't emphasizing any ethnicity. The emphasis was actually on this really cool Bitcoin uh, app that lets you buy food in a restaurant with yeah. Bitcoin, and I don't know, I, did, I didn't... I didn't emphasize in my mind that it was an Arab restaurant. It, yeah. I thought, well, that's a Bitcoin thing. I just don't think that Pierre is animated by issues of race and culture as much. He's more an economics guy, a finance guy. He does have something to say about housing prices. Yeah. Um, and I think that is driven in part by immigration. But he's never really, like, he's always been on the dollars and cents side of things. And I think so he's, like, there are some more cultural warriors folks who might be a little more de divisive. I just haven't, and I've been following Pierre Polyev for 20 years. I just don't, that's just not him. I mean, yeah. Jason Kenney was a real culture warrior, and, and there are some in the party who are. I just don't think Pierre Polyev is. I, I think they're workshopping, they're trying out attack angles. Stephen Marr is famous for that. Uh, so far, they, uh, they haven't found one yet. Yeah. See, w w what does it matter what color the people are, you know, who are coming to his rallies? That's the fundamental. That's my question. You know, yeah. why why does that matter to you? And I think there's this peculiar affirmative action idea that something is only acceptable, something is only legitimate in Canada if minorities are over overrepresented. Um, but here's the thing. Our system doesn't work that way. Our system is one person, w one vote. And it doesn't matter what the color of that person is, what their ethnicity is, what they had for breakfast. It just doesn't matter. Um, and I think um, Pierre is, you know, he's, he knows what he's doing. He, he, he has to maximize his odds of winning. That's how these leadership campaigns work. Um, and honestly, you know, this fixation on race, it's, it's, it's a kind of woke apartheid, you know, where we have to parse the demographic makeup of people showing up at these events to see to see if the support is legitimate. Yeah. And it's also a bit weird coming from Stephen Marr, who's so white, he's pink. I mean, uh, a, a lot of these critics, I mean, uh, if you look at the board of directors of half the media companies, and, and again, I don't have a problem with white people. I think I'm whiter. I'm, you know, I, I don't know if Jews are considered white, but uh like, if you're going to make that an issue, uh, it's typically people who themselves, if if they were really adamant in minority representation, they would have to quit because they're typically liberal white men. I don't know. I think part of it is that white people, straight people, you know, people who don't t tick some box for affirmative action, I think some of them are just sort of getting a little tired of being demonized for no reason at all because they're not racist, they've done nothing right. It's like Rex Murphy, when he defended yeah. Canada, he said, sure, there's problems, but no country in the world is more bend over backwards this multiculturalism, immigration, and the rage directed at him for saying these things, like it's, it's a little crazy. And I think the reason that was a popular column for Rex is because a lot of white guys and older white guys said, yeah, I have no beef with minorities, and why are you saying I'm a racist? And I'm sort of sick of, you know, I don't want to be superior to anyone, but neither do I want to be demonized. And I'm, I think that it's a sign that wokeness has overplayed at hand, its hand. I don't know, I think it's interesting, it'll be fascinating to see if Pierre really does pull ahead 
as the front runner, he'll start to shift his campaign from running against Jean Charest and running against Patrick Brown towards running against Justin Trudeau. Like it may, it may get to the point where he's just, all right, let's skip to the end. It's a final battle between me and Trudeau. I don't right. think Trudeau's going to have the same luck going after Pierre Polyev, who's younger than Trudeau, who, mm -hmm. who's smarter, or at least better briefed on policy, who mm -hmm. hasn't uh, shown a lack of judgment in blackface or groping that reporter <laughs> Rose Knight. I think that Pierre Polyev um, could be the Trudeau beater. That was an excerpt from my daily TV style show called The Ezra Levant Show. Each weekday, I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview a fascinating guest. I read some fan mail or hate mail, depends on which I like more, and we end with a video of the day. You can get it all at rebelnewsplus.com.